small child, uh, I can remember being put up on a horse and my brothers, I had three brothers, uh, they were kind of fooling around in the background back there and one of them had a whip and he popped the whip and this mare jumped out from under and uh, I went down. So I, first thing I really remember, but uh, dad had horses all his life, so uh, my whole life's filled with horses from the very beginning. Keith DeVille has been a tremendous asset to the sport of cutting. He was born and raised in Louisiana, and he had a mentor from day one that no one could talk. Dad, uh, he started cutting back in the very early 60s. From there, he just evolved into a lot of different things, Western Pleasure, Halter. Cutting was always his favorite, but he couldn't make a living just on cutting back then. Keith loved the horses and spent as much time as he could with them, but eventually left for college where he earned a degree in animal science. I broke away from him for a little while when I went to college, spent four years in college and came out, tried to get a few other jobs and none of that was really appealing to me and uh, just found my way back to the horse. And Keith did far more than just find his way back. He started his training business in Louisiana and racked up over $1.3 million in earnings. And he did it all with what he had learned from his dad. I've learned everything from my father. Uh, I never went and spent time with any other trainers. Uh, not that maybe I wouldn't have, but it just never occurred. And I had everything I wanted right there at the house with dad. Dad had always had horses and always worked with horses, trained some, but he was also a uh, lineman for the uh, utility company, and he would climb poles, literally climb poles back then. Keith said his father was the hardest worker he's ever seen, and that trait definitely rubbed off. Seeing the non-pros and amateurs need for more help at the shows, Keith did everything he could to fill that void. We were in Arkansas, and this went 23 and a half hours. We had one half hour break. And uh, I had a friend of mine, he came to me, I guess this was probably around 10, 11 o'clock at night. And he came to me and he had it all figured out when he was gonna be going. He said, Keith, I should be riding about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. He said, uh, you're gonna be here, right? And I said, well, yeah, you know I'm gonna be here, Tommy. So uh, there's a dependency that that happens and probably, probably according to my wife, kind of an addiction for me. It's hard for me to leave. Keith is proud of mainly staying with the grassroots part of cutting. He's put on many clinics and loves helping beginners, youth, and the 2,000 limit riders. And he's typically the first one at the shows and is one of the last to leave. I've grown so accustomed to it, I don't really think about it anymore. I know it's going to be a long day, but it doesn't really dawn on me at the beginning of the day what I'm going to feel like at 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, it dawns on me at 2 o'clock in the morning, and then I'm hurting and I'm tired. But uh, it's just been a way of life for me for years and years and years now. Eventually, Keith's friend Edley Hickson started pestering him to take the next step in his career. He asked me for years to be a director. And uh, for years, I told him no. And he'd ask me why. And I had different reasons, seemed like, every year. And I was too busy, I was going too much. But one year, uh, Edley finally sat me down and said, look, I've asked you this before. But he says, cutting's been really good to you. And you've been good for cutting. But he says, cutting's been really good for you. And it's provided you a good living and you've done well. Don't you think maybe it's time to give something back? And so it kind of struck a chord. And uh, I thought about it and I agreed. He didn't know it at the time, but Keith had just taken his first step towards becoming president of the National Cutting Horse Association. But I got involved, and by getting involved, then you started to get a passion to do things and to help and to see where things were not being done, so you wanted to try to get those things fixed. And as it turns out, you really can't do it from the outside. You have to do it from the inside. Keith went from area director to open show chairman, was on the non-pro amateur review committee, 
and then the executive committee before becoming president in 2011. So it just turned into a snowball effect. It was something that I never thought I would do, never thought I was going to go that far. But once I got in, uh, I developed a passion to try to help the association. And Keith didn't have it easy. Not long after he took office, major changes started taking place that put a huge weight on his shoulders. I think I'm the only president to have three executive directors in one year. Sam Shepard told me he did too, but I found out Sam had two years <laughs> as his term. I only had one year. Uh, that right there tells you it was different. It was tough. With the help of a great executive committee, Keith helped guide the association through the tough times and oversaw the 50th anniversary fraternity, which included the Champions Cup, an event where all past fraternity champions were invited to cut on a horse of their choice. That was just so special. That was so glorious to see all those guys and to be a part of that and watch that. And after his presidency, he didn't slow down. After an association turned down the opportunity to host a new grassroots cutting, it presented a new opportunity. And got to thinking about it and finally just figured out, you know, maybe I just need to do it myself. And I didn't really want to do that. I didn't really want to have to run a show. Uh, that was a new experience for me to do that. So, but anyway, I, uh, I did last year. I had the first one. Nothing strengthens cutting associations like members who sincerely and generously help to improve the sport for its members. And Keith DeVille exemplifies that behavior. From a competitor with over $1.3 million in earnings, to teacher and clinician, to his time on the NCHA board and presidency, and now to hosting and promoting shows, Keith's a worthy addition to the Members Hall of Fame. I just don't think you can be in the Members Hall of Fame if it's a goal of yours to be there. I don't think anybody who's ever been inducted, that was a goal of theirs. I just don't see it. It surely wasn't a goal of mine. It turns out to be an achievement that people think I deserve, and that's good. It means that I have done what I wanted to do. I wanted to help the association. I wanted to help the industry. and. I always thought I wasn't doing enough. I didn't think I'd done enough when I left the presidency. I can remember when I was a president, I was trying to tell people how I like to sit on that side of the room and look at all the presidents. And that line of men who served, it just did something for me. And for me to be a part of that line was something, but for me to be a part of this line, as a member of the Hall of Fame, though, and the people that were in it, it's just an honor that I can't, I can't outdo.